know this or not, but this is Governor Asa Hutchinson, the governor of the great state of Arkansas. And he came from a place a little farther from here than Hot Springs, uh, Springdale High, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then he went even further away to South Carolina for your bachelor's at Bob Jones University. After that, he returned to Arkansas, to the University of Arkansas, for his law degree before entering politics. And law. <laughs> thought I might mention that. And, uh, but now he's been working to help high schools throughout the state get into coding, because coding is becoming a part of all of our lives, whether you know it or not. It's in your phones, it's in the computers, it's in everything designed to make, well, maybe not this school, but any new school. So it's something that's definitely touching all of your lives, and he realizes that, as do his assistants, and they see that if you don't understand what goes into making these items, then you'll never be able to find a job in the future America. So with that said, please help me introduce and welcome Governor Asa Hutchinson. Can I give you? I'm going to give a few more words. Just so that you have all of the background, I am Dr. Nehu, Superintendent, Hot Springs School District, and I'm thrilled to have you juniors in here with us today. Before being elected as the 46th Governor of Arkansas in January of 2015, Governor Hutchison served as Director of the Drug Enforcement Administration and as the first Undersecretary of the Department of Homeland Security. He was also appointed as a U.S. Attorney and spent three terms in Congress representing Arkansas's 3rd Congressional District. He has made computer science a top priority for his administration. During his first year as governor, he signed legislation making Arkansas the first state to require all public high schools to offer computer science education. Now in his third year in office, Governor Hutchinson continues to encourage young people to study computer science, in part through his coding tour and the governor's all-state coding competition. He and his wife have been married 44 years, they have four children and six grandchildren. And now we're going to turn it over to Governor Hutchinson. Thank you, Listen, it's uh, great to be with you at Hot Springs High School. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thanks for arranging. So I understand I have 11th graders here. Uh, thanks for uh, taking off the class and coming in here to the governor for a minute. And uh, this is uh, my fifth coding tour through Arkansas high schools. I've been to over 50 Arkansas high schools promoting computer science education since I became governor. And so I'm setting the stage for it. A little bit more about myself. I did go to high school in Springdale, but before that, I was going to grade school in Gravit, a small town of about a thousand. And I lived three and a half miles outside of town, half mile down a dirt road on a farm with my mom and dad, and I actually had five older brothers and sisters. I was the youngest of six. My dad and mom, they both had a high school education, and they understood one thing, though, and that was the importance of having their children go as far as they could in school. And so they didn't know the path to college, but they knew we ought to get there somehow. And so they helped us, got through education, it's made a real difference in my life. And uh, I've, I've had many opportunities. I love listening to my introduction because it always just talks a lot about the highlights. You'll always need to remember that. When you hear these introductions, it's, I was uh, the youngest U.S. attorney in the nation. I was elected to the United States Congress. I was appointed by President Bush and his administration. And I got elected governor of Arkansas. Now, what that doesn't tell you is that I lost my first political race in 1986 to the United States Senate. I lost my second political race when I ran for attorney general. So there's a lot of downs that the bios don't tell you. And that's really important to understand that as you go through life, you know, in the end, you like to see that line of, of uh, moving up and success. And you can have that with hard work, with education and commitment, but there's always those little downturns. And uh, those are just as precious. You learn a lot from those as well. And so I've had great opportunities in life because of education. Now, my interest in technology, you mentioned my grandchildren. Now, I've got one grandson that is six feet six, and he's playing basketball for Bentonville, so look out this year in the state tournament. 
I have another granddaughter who was 11 when I ran for governor. And my granddaughter, Ella Beth, decided she was going to work with her dad, and she learned enough coding just over the summer, working with her dad from ibuildanapp.com. It's a website. And she built me an app for my campaign that allowed anyone to download the app on their mobile phone. They could contribute to my campaign. They could volunteer on my campaign. I said, wow, my 11-year-old granddaughter did this. I said, this is something that is needed all through life. It's needed for opportunities in the future. And every young person in Arkansas ought to have the opportunity to learn computer science. And so we uh, wanted to make sure that we did that in Arkansas. I campaigned on it. When I got elected governor, I asked the legislature to mandate that computer science be offered in every high school and that we were the first state in the union to do that. We also put $5 million behind it to retrain teachers, and the legislature supported me in that, and I wanted to introduce uh, Representative Bruce Cozart. Give a round of applause. Uh, Mickey Gates. Jim Les Warren. All from this area, and they supported me, and because of that, they get a lot of credit for this. But now, Arkansas, because of what we did, is being recognized by Wired Magazine, by Google, by Microsoft, and say Arkansas is leading the nation in computer science education. Is that not a good thing? <laughs> now, what we didn't do was to make you take it. You know, if you go to some countries, there are not very many, but a few of the country just mandate that every child has got to take it. But we gave you a choice because you have a lot of choices in life. But we did want to make it a, a credit for graduation, a math or a science credit. So you take computer science, you get a credit uh, for graduation. And so that incentivized students. We have had over 5,500 students taking it uh, statewide. Uh, and that's part of why we're leading the nation in computer science education. I mentioned one of my uh, grandsons and my granddaughter. I've got my daughter, Sarah. And my daughter, Sarah, she's a drone right now, and she's the mom of Elabeth, actually. So Sarah and I are very close. She's my only daughter. And so I said, let's take a road trip. I was going to go, we we're going to go over to Nashville to see a basketball game. But we wanted to stop off over in Marion to a diner. And I got her up early, she had to go, and so we went there, and I said, let's go to this diner. We go in there, pictures are taken with the governor and with her and the owner. We come back out, and there's a great picture of me, my daughter Sarah, and the owner of the diner. And I said, we have got to put this out on social media. I want to put it out on Twitter. She says, no way are you going to put that out. She said, you got me up early in the morning. I don't have any makeup on. You're not sending it out. I said, come on, Sarah. I need to send this out. I want to do it. I want everybody to know I stopped by that diner. She said, all right, send it to me. So I sent her the picture. What would she do? She downloaded an app onto her phone, and then she put her own makeup on with the app. And then she sends it back to me and says, now you can send it out. Now, who created that? It was somebody just like you that decided they were going to take coding and learned enough to tell a computer what to do and did that software and made some money on it. Now, whatever field you might be interested in going into, you might want to be a farmer. Well, guess what? Tells the farmer how much water to give the crops these days. It is a software package that you buy that you can regulate how much water feeds the crop to conserve your water. It's software, a coder did that. If you want to go into the medical field, you better understand the importance of patient data in understanding the needs of patients. And so if someone develops the software who knew how to write code, analytics to analyze patient data. If you want to go into security and law enforcement, it is you get into the police car these days and you got a computer there and there's software that analyzes information that tells you good guys and bad guys and helps keep you safe. 
And so coding is a part of everyday life. Of course, that didn't even mention your video games and all the fun things that we have to do in life as well. And so it's a great opportunity. If you look in the future, over one million jobs will be unfilled in the computer science or technology field in the next four years. Job opportunities, and many of these start out at $60,000 a year. Now, not many professions you go into to have those kind of opportunities. We're going to play a video, then I'll come back and talk for a moment. Now, this video that you'll see uh, is fairly short, about five minutes, but everything that you see in that video is about an Arkansas company. It is about Arkansas employers, and everybody who is interviewed is an Arkansan. Everything about this is Arkansas. And so please play the video, then I'll come back and talk. Coding is what makes all the gadgets and the apps that we use work. Web certifies it as a set of instructions for a computer, but I see it more as a universal language to communicate a task to a computer to process that. Coding is using logic to create solutions, and these solutions can be for everyday life or just for fun in general. Coding is the language, I believe, of the 21st century workforce. Just like we teach Spanish and French, um, it's how you speak to computers. One of the things that maybe people aren't aware of is that software is impacting everything in our lives. Because nowadays it's all about technology, you cannot get away without it. At some point, that's going to break. And so you'll always know that there's going to be problems to solve and there's always going to be something new coming down the pipe. People hear that I'm a computer programmer, their eyes either light up or they feel intimidated. And at the end of the day, it's really just like mathematics, just a few additions, multiplications, and subtractions. The biggest opportunity for students today is in computer science, programming, um, anything to deal with IT and computers. We think that knowing the code is going to be the elementary, it's going to be a baseline for a lot of the future jobs that are going to be created. Knowing how to code is really one small sliver of my job. The actual typing of the keyboard does not really impact my job as much as the ability to problem solve. And if you're a problem solver and want to you know, make things work or, or make them work better, that's what programming is ultimately about. It lets people learn how to take really big, complex problems and break them down into smaller, more manageable problems. So for you to be successful in the future, I think it's really, really important that uh, people become literate and understand how it's constructed uh, and how to utilize it to better improve you know, how business delivers its services. What's cool about coding jobs is people from every background can come together and share their ideas and they're important. There's a lot of camaraderie, so you're usually working with a couple of people to bring something to life. And then the great thing about that is that when you do bring it to life, it actually gets put into production. My job allows me to work from home whenever I want. I can work from any city I want really, as long as I've told people where I'm going to be. We've got people who enjoy coming to the office every day and that's what they choose. We have some people who I'm not even sure where they are. They're just, they've gone on walking out are nomadic. Um, and every time I hear about, you know, where this person's at, they're in a different, they're in a different city and they're able to do their job from Matova literally from anywhere. No one ever told me that would be a possibility when I was younger. But now I get to travel and work wherever I want. Uh, I think that there's something about the work environment in a software company that's different than maybe the rest of the corporate world. We have to compete with the Facebooks and the Googles and the Amazons for talent. Part of the culture of programming is the fun. Our work culture here at JB Hunt is a lot of fun, which is something that people may not expect in a large company. We have an open environment that encourages collaboration amongst our teams. We have outdoor picnic tables. We play ping pong whenever there's high stress moments, which kind of brings the level down. If you're in a coding job, that is one of the first places that I know of that you can dress as casually as you like. We have a real casual environment. Uh, you can see no one's in a suit and tie here, so just kind of come as you are. Every now and then we'll have some Nerf Wars in the office to blow up some steam. And it's the cookouts and the burgers and the, and the hot dogs and, and the things that we try to do on a weekly, if not daily basis that, that makes it uh, fun to come to work. It's not even like work. You're just coming out to hang out with your friends. 
coding is really for everybody, and there's not a demographic that it is specific to. It's for anyone who wants to have ideas to make things better. Innovation comes in different ways, and I think different perspectives, different point of views, are only going to help with innovation. When you give students the opportunity to learn in this hands-on, IT, high-tech environment, it appeals to all students. When I graduated from the University of Arkansas, there were very few women in my field. And now I think that has definitely changed. And I think it's because technology spans so much more than people realize. I would encourage girls to learn how to code because nowadays it's very important to break a lot of barriers that there are out in this world. I do not be afraid of uh, the industry itself. It's a very excited, fast-moving uh, industry and uh, with a lot of potential. I would study in the computer science IT field because one, opportunities, two, opportunities, and three, opportunities. We are actually creating the future. We are working with technologies and talking to clients who are building things that don't even exist today, that the general public does not even know are even coming. I think any time a young person can take a coding class, they definitely should. Just knowing what it takes to make something happen in this world of technology is essential. If you have the ability, the offering to take any of the computer science courses, it just gives you that one extra you know, leg up on so many people that aren't offered those classes in other states. I mean, I would tell them just to explore the options that are out there. Do research on companies that you've heard of before. If they have creative mind, if they're, uh, if they're a techie, if they like technology, there's no reason not to just try it. There's over 360,000 jobs available today, and that's expected to be over a million in the next couple of years, and two million by 2020. So if you have these skills, there is a job opportunity for you. Uh, with all the growth in the state of Arkansas, there's a lot of job opportunities right here in your home state. What we're doing is creating intrigue and excitement around Cody, and those are the people that we want to hire. We want people that enjoy the work that they do. Once you learn how to code, um, it is not simply for that specific language. Uh, once you start learning, it really is something that you just want to go ahead and learn more and learn as many as you can. It's kind of like a Pokemon. Once you get one, you got to catch them all. <laughs> After I got elected governor, uh, I was invited to go out to Silicon Valley. That is that strip of land between San Francisco and San Jose that all the tech giants are there. Microsoft, there's Google, there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, all located there, and I'm knocking on their doors. I'm going to see them. Of course, I've got appointments arranged. The governor of Arkansas is coming out. They wanted to hear about our computer science initiative. I started telling them about that, and it didn't take me long to realize, you know what their interest was? They wanted you to learn coding so that you could move out to California. Now don't think that's a good idea, it's a bad idea. You're going out to California so that you could work for those companies. And I said, people love Arkansas. Let's, let's build technology companies right here so that our talent can stay here, they can make money here, and we're doing that. And so, uh, Aptog that was mentioned on there, and you have Elixir. Elixir is a Boston, Massachusetts company that moved to Arkansas. We recruited here, doing a great job, doing software, building it uh, there in Little Rock area. But of course, every company, Walmart right now, is competing with Amazon. And they're doing it online through technology, and they need to hire coders. J.B. Hunt, logistics company. Dillard's is a logistics company, even though it's a clothing store. Uh, all through it, uh, you, you've got to have people who understand computer science. And so the job opportunities are there, and uh, we want you to be a part of that. So I encourage you. I want to brag on Hot Springs uh, High School. Uh, last year, you had 40 students enrolled. Were you, if you were enrolled in, in uh, computer science last year, raise your hand. All right, if you're enrolled in computer science this year, raise your hand. All right, we have 61 this year, and so that number is growing. Some of them, of course, 10th graders and different grades. But obviously, we got some work to do here because I hope that you will consider taking computer science while you are in high school. Whether you wind up doing it for a lifetime, that's fine. But just understanding it will make you more employable, 
will allow you to make a little bit more money. You will understand problem solving even better. Uh, Denise Sharp and John Stokes, are they here? Uh, they are, I think, the teachers, is that right? They're in class, they're working. All right, well, I appreciate the work that they're doing. And so I did want to introduce the mayor, Mayor of Hot Springs, stand up, welcome him. He's uh, got a great connection here, and uh, he's uh, supported this uh, effort as well. Now, let me end by just saying that I'll make you a promise. If you take computer science, there'll be a job for you whenever you learn your coding skills right here in Arkansas. There's great opportunity for us. I've never been more optimistic. I've done a lot of things. Uh, when, as governor, I've taken me to Europe and Cuba and China, bringing jobs to Arkansas. But I think nothing impacts our future more than this right here, and that's the opportunity for computer science for our students in the future. Thank you, Hot Springs. It is great to be with you today. With that, I'll turn it back to the principal.